All right, you guys. Good job on your test yesterday. The averages were an 85 and an 88, I think. So overall, really good job. Uh, chapter 10, we're going to be doing <clears throat> confidence intervals for difference of proportions and confidence intervals for difference in two means. And then we're going to also do significance tests for difference in proportions and significance tests for difference in two means. Today, we're just going to do the basics. All right, and we're just going to do comparing two proportions. So we're going to talk about the shape, center, and spread of the sampling distribution between two p hats. So let's say I want to compare the proportion of students who did their homework last night, and we want to compare Devlin students to Chatfield students. So let's say that we actually know the truth proportion. Okay, we know the truth of how many students did their homework last night, and at Devlin. Let's say we know the true P, all right, of Devlin is 80% did their homework. And the true proportion for Chatfield students who did their homework last night is only 60%, all right? So Chatfield students, 6%. And let's make it easy. We'll say Devlin's total enrollment is 1,000 students and Chatfield's total enrollment is 2,000 students. Uh, Ms. Harrington takes a simple random sample of 100 students for Devlin and records the proportion who did their homework. So that would be a P hat, maybe 70 did, maybe 80 out of 100 did, maybe 90 out of 100, all right? And then a counselor at Chatfield does a simple random sample of 200 students, all right? So we'll take a little bigger sample and records the proportion that did their homework from Chatfield. What can we say about the difference in sample proportions P hat 1 minus P hat 2? So let's first review, let's just look at the sampling distribution for Devlin, all right? So you're picturing a dot plot. All right, and we take a sample of 100 kids, how many did their homework? And a sample of 100 kids, how many did their homework, right? Over and over and over and over and over and over. And right in the middle, okay, we're looking for the center of that sampling distribution. And we call that mu of p hat. So the mean of all the little p hats. All right, so the center, mu of p hat for Devlin, we know is going to be equal to 80% because that's the truth, okay? And our spread, we would do sigma p hat and this formula right here. So this is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of all the little p hats and the formula is p times 1 minus p over n. And so we would do Devlin. We actually know the true p, 80% times 20% over 100. And we would plug that in and get about 0.04. All right, so on average, 80% do their homework, but we're typically off by about 4%, okay, when we do take our samples. Now, to check shape, we're really just checking normality. And so to check normality, we want to do NP greater than or equal to 10 and N times 1 minus P greater than or equal to 10. And if we know the true P, we use it. So our sample size in this is 100, and we know the true P, <clears throat> all right, is 80%. And so that gives me um, 80, greater than or equal to 10. And then we would do 100 times 20%, all right, which gives me 20, greater than or equal to 10. So because this is true, the shape of the sampling distribution is normal, all right, or approximately normal. All right, and then let's look at Chatfield sampling distribution. So now I'm going to Chatfield, all right? And we're hopeful that our shape is normal. And we would check NP greater than or equal to 10. Only this time, our sample size for Chatfield was 200 students, and only 60% of them did their homework. So we're going to do 200 times 60% and 200 times 40% and check if those are greater than or equal to 10. And of course we get 120, all right, and 80, which are both greater than or equal to 10. Then we check the center of our sampling distribution. So again, the center of all the p hats. So every time it varies from 60%, okay, 60% is in the middle, but mu of all the little p hats is equal to the true p, which is 60% at Chatfield. All right, and our spread, our sigma p hat, is equal to the true P times 1 minus the true P 
divided by n, which is 200. And when we plug that in, we get 0.035. All right. So the truth is around 60%, but we're going to vary by 3.5% on our averages. All right. So this part's new. Now we actually need the sampling distribution for the typical difference. In other words, I take a sample of 100 Devlin kids, all right, and maybe I get 85% that do their homework. And then I take a sample of um, Chatfield kids, and maybe 50% of them do their homework, and I subtract, and then I put a dot. All right, so maybe that was 35%. All right, and then I take another Devlin sample of, of 100 kids and 90% did their homework, and another sample of 200 Chatfield kids and maybe 60 of them did their homework, and I subtract and I put a dot over and over and over and over again, okay? So I still just have one dot where I subtract my two sample proportions, all right? But right in the center, okay, right in the center, this would be mu of p hat 1 minus p hat 2. All right, would be our typical difference. Now, if I'm subtracting Devlin minus Chatfield, all right, so maybe I'm doing P hat Devlin minus P hat Chatfield, well, that's equal to the true proportion of Devlin students who did their homework minus the true proportion of Chatfield students who did their homework. And we know that it is 80% that did their homework at Devlin and 60% that did their homework at Chatfield. So we would get a 20% for our difference. All right. And how do I check normality? So let's write this down, okay? So for the sampling distribution for the difference of p hats, again, over and over and over again, subtracting those two proportions when you um, take a sample. All right. We need to check both np greater than or equal to 10 for Devlin and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10 for Devlin. Then do the same thing for Chatfield which we just did, all right? So we checked 80 and 20, and down here we got 120 and 80. So we would check all of those numbers, all right? We would do both of those separately, and then 120 and 80 greater than or equal to 10. And so we can assume approximately normal, all right? So you're going to check for both. All right, and then the center of your sampling distribution, I would write this down, okay, mu of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 equals the true p1 minus the true p2. Okay, check the order they want you to subtract in the problem. All right, and for today, we're going to know all of the true proportions. And then we have this new lovely formula for spread. All right, what are we typically off by on our difference distribution? So again, we're looking at, well, we're typically 20% is the true difference. Okay, but what are we typically off by when we do this over and over and over again? So this formula is on your yellow sheet. Okay, it's under the difference of two proportions. So I've got sigma p hat 1 minus p hat 2. So again, this is our standard deviation of our sampling distribution for difference in two proportions. And we're going to do the square, hat, the square root of p1 times 1 minus p1 over n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 over n2. And any time you do this standard deviation formula, you have to check the 10% condition. And we have to check it for both populations and both sample sizes. All right, so we will check n1 less than or equal to a tenth of capital N1 and n2 less than or equal to a tenth of capital N2. So let's go ahead and try this formula, all right? So for my standard deviation for p hat 1 minus p hat 2, I'm going to take the square root of, so Devlin was first, 80% did their homework, 1 minus that's 20%, and our sample size was only 100, all right? And then at Chatfield, 60% did their homework, 1 minus that is 40%, and we sampled 200 people at Chatfield. Okay, plug that in and we get 0.05. Okay, so we typically vary by about 5% from the 20%, which we know is the true difference in the proportion of kids who did their homework. All right, then I need to check my 10% condition. So for Devlin, our sample size is 100, and we said that the population is 1,000. All right, which is good. All right, a tenth of 1,000 is 100. 
All right, so we're good to go. And then at Chatfield, our sample size we took was 200. And we said that the population at Chatfield was 2,000 kids. So we're good to go here too, all right? For 10%, we've met our independence. All right, so make sure you have all of these written down. Okay, how do I do shape? Check both for normality. For center, subtract P1 minus P2. And our new formula for spread. All right, your teacher brings two bags of colored goldfish crackers to class. Bag one has 25% red crackers. Bag two has 35% red crackers. Each bag contains more than 1,000 crackers. Using a paper cup, your teacher takes an SRS of 50 crackers from bag one and a separate SRS of 40 crackers from bag two. Let P hat one minus P hat two be the difference in the sample proportion of red crackers. What is the shape of the sampling distribution and why? All right, so to check shape, we're just going to do NP greater than or equal to 10 and times one minus P greater than or equal to 10. So for bag one, okay, you got to keep track of your data. This is bag one. We took a sample size of 50 and we know there's 25% red crackers. So I need to check 50 times 0.25 greater than or equal to 10 and 50 times 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75, greater than or equal to 10. All right, then we're going to check bag 2. So bag 2, we took 40 crackers, and there's 35% red crackers. So we'll do 40 times 0.35, and 40 times 1 minus that, 0.65. All right, you do need to actually evaluate all four of these numbers, all right? And if you want to write them out as a list, you can. You should get 12.5. 37.5, 14, and 26 are all greater than or equal to 10. All right, so actually evaluate all those. So we are good to go. We have approximately normal for our shape. All right, our shape is approximately normal. Okay, what is the mean of the sampling distribution? So that was part A. All right, part B, the mean of all the little p hat 1s minus the p hat 2. So again, if I sampled 50 crackers over and over, got a proportion of red, and 40 crackers over and over, got a proportion of red, and subtracted each time, okay? And so the first bag was 25% red, and the second bag was 35% red. And so, yes, we can get negative, all right, 10%. So the typical difference between the two bags is point negative point one zero. All right, now I've got C, standard deviation. So we're just going to do our formula for standard deviation. So we're going to do a big square root. The first bag is 25% red, so 0 0.25 times 0 0.75. And in the first bag, we sampled 50 crackers. And the second bag is 35% red times 0 0.65. And we sampled 40 crackers in that one. And for this one, we get... 0.097 for how much we are typically off by. Okay, now anytime you do this formula, you have to check 10%. So don't forget that we have to do 50 is less than or equal to a tenth of all crackers in bag one. All right, so we can assume 500 crackers in bag one. And for the second one, 40 is less than or equal to, and you can do these little quotation things, okay, and then do bag two, all crackers in bag two. So we'll assume at least 400 crackers in bag two. All right, just for interpreting that lovely standard deviation, in repeated samples like these, the difference in the sample proportions of red crackers in these two bags will typically be off by about 0.097, from the true difference, all right? So we know the true difference is negative 10%, um, but we typically vary by 9.7%. All right, you guys, it's a short homework day today, so make sure you get it done. And I do want you guys to take out 10.1 worksheet from the packet, 10.1a. Go ahead and pause the video while you guys try it, and then we'll come back together and check it. All right, hopefully everybody tried it. So for the first part, for the shape, we should be checking 125 times 0.6 greater than or equal to 10 and 125 times 0.4 greater than or equal to 10. And then 160 times 0.75 greater than or equal to 10 and 160 times 0.25.
So I should see that you evaluated and got 75, 50, 120, and 40 greater than or equal to 10. So the shape is approximately normal. All right, then we're going to do center. So we should be subtracting. And please write it like this so you know this notation. This is the center of the sampling distribution. Mu of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 equals 0.75 minus 0.6, which is 0.15. And then for the spread, same thing. Please write the correct notation. Okay, sigma p hat 1 minus p hat 2. Square root of 0.75 times 0.25 over 160 plus 0.6 times 0.4 over 125. You should get 0 0.056, wherever you rounded to. And then don't forget, you have to check 10% for both. 160 is less than or equal to a tenth of. They did give us the population, 1,700 kids. And 125 is less than or equal to a tenth of, again, the population, 1,700 kids. So we are good to go. We have independence. All right, you guys. Hopefully you can get your homework done in class. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow.